going to show you in uh, some videos here about exponential notation. Now we're going to go into lots of different detail with exponents and rules and things, but I think it's important to start right from the basics, which is the notation that we use. In other words, how we write these things. So let's just take a look sort of at how we might write something. Let's say we want to say 2 times 2. Well, that's equal to 4. What if I want 2 times 2 times 2? Well, that's equal to, let's say that's 4 times 2, that's 8. If I want 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, well, that's going to be equal to, let's see, that's 16. That's 8 times 2. Well, isn't this getting kind of annoying if you wanted it even more and more times? I mean, I'm kind of tired of writing this out already. So a better way to use, a better way to do it is use instead. I'll say so instead. Use exponential notation. So this is sort of the, the reason for it. This is because, especially you know, in science, for example, and in mathematics, sometimes we deal with really big numbers or really small numbers, and so we get tired of writing out all the decimals and things like that. You know, because we we might say, I want ten times ten times ten times ten times ten times ten, and that's really annoying, right? To say how many? That's one, two, three, four, five. That's six zeros. So that's a million. You know, for example. This is commonly used in science, for example, if you use big, big numbers or, or even small numbers like this. So instead, we use exponential notation. Now, the way the notation goes is like this. Let's say we say 2 to the power of 4, we'll say, equals 16. So this, this is sort of the notation that we would use. In this case right here, this right here, we call this the base. What this means is we're going to multiply this number by itself this many times. This right here, this is called the exponent, or sometimes we say this is the power. Because some people say this is 2 to the power of 4. What this really means, this is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. In other words, take this number, multiply it by itself 4 times. And 2 to the power of 4 is not equal to 8. It's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. Just like this one right here, for example, that one could be written as, instead of uh, this weird... Uh, or a really long way to write it, we could instead write it in a much more compact form. Because in science we get tired of writing lots of zeros. So we could say this is the same thing as 10 to the power of, and we multiply 10, that's the base, we multiply it by itself 6 times. So we say that 1 million is 10 to the 6. This is sort of why we use this notation here. The notation is this, we use a base to some sort of exponent or power, and then we can calculate stuff. And that is all there is to it. So let's do a bunch of examples then. Let's do 2 to the power of 3. Well, that is going to be 2 times 2 times 2, so that's equal to 8. That's it. That's how you do it, right? That's because 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. And you multiply it by itself. Here, I'm going to make a common mistake. I'm going to show you what a lot of people say. People say, 3 to the power of 2, that's easy. That's 6, right? No. That's wrong. It's not 3 to the times 2. We're doing 3 to the power of 2. What we mean then is we want to do 3 times 3. So it's always the base times itself this many times. 3 times 3 is equal to 9. That's important. 3 to the power of 3 then, well that's 3 times 3 times 3. So that means it's 9 times 3, so that's 27. So I'm just trying to show you sort of how we do this. That's because that's 3 times 3 times 3. That's why we do this. Let's do some more examples. What about 10 to the power of 4? Well, that's going to be, let's see now, that, in this case right here, that's 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. But an easy way, an easy trick with powers of 10 is that this 4 tells you how many zeros to put in. In other words, I take a 1 and I put in 4 zeros. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And of course, sometimes we put a little comma there just to help us say 10,000. So that's a nice easy trick with powers of 10. If we go back here, 10 to the power of 6, that's just a 1 with 6 zeros. That's really what this means here. So that's kind of a nice little trick. 10 to the power of 6, put a 1, and just throw in 6 zeros. That's how we can deal with this. And in fact, this is why we call something scientific notation. We end up using this as a part of scientific notation. Powers of 10. Now what if we have a negative base? In other words, here we have a negative number and we want to square it. So let's say we say negative 2 squared. Well, that's going to be the same as negative 2 times negative 2. A negative times a negative is a positive, 
and 2 times 2 is 4. So that should be equal to positive 4. But I want to show you a little trick. I just, well, maybe not a trick, but sort of a tricky thing. A lot of people make this mistake. Let's say you want to do negative 2 to the power of 2. A lot of people will say on their calculator, fine, negative 2 squared. Or even to the power of 2, that's the same thing. And they say enter, and they say negative 4. Is it equal to negative 4? Nope. So then some people say, oh, my calculator is so stupid. But no, your calculator isn't stupid. It follows rules. And I just want to show you that negative 2 squared is not the same thing. And the reason is this. If you wrote down negative 2 squared, I just want to tell you it's not the same as saying negative 2 squared. They are different. Because what you're doing here, what your calculator thought you meant, see, I mean, this is what I really want to do. I want to say negative 2. I want to take that value and square it. So that's negative 2 times negative 2. That's why it's 4. What in the world did my calculator do then here? Well, here's what it did. It follows rules of um, order of operations. It's told, this is what we always do in math, we always do exponents first. So if you say negative 2 squared, what it did, it said, fine, I have a negative and I have a 2 squared. But first, I do 2 squared. 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 4. And I take 4 and multiply it by negative 1, which gives me negative 4. So just to show you that this is not the same as this, you need to be very, very careful. If you want to say negative 2 squared, then make sure you say in brackets negative 2 squared. Because negative 2 squared, that's really like saying, take 2 squared first and then make that answer negative when you're done. So your calculator isn't stupid. You just It uses the rules of operations, order of operations. So you just need to know how your calculator thinks. Same thing here, negative 3 squared. That's going to be, in this case, uh, well, that's going to work out nicely. That's just going to be negative 3 times negative 3. All right, so that's going to be, in this case right here, so negative 3 times negative 3. Whoops, maybe I should do all this in blue, shouldn't I? So that's going to be negative 3 times negative 3. And that's going to be then positive 9. That's going to be what negative 3 squared is. Now what I want to show you though is this. This is important. A negative base. In this case here, let's say to a, so let's say raised to an even power um, or exponent. Your answer is going to be positive. So in other words, like this, we had a negative base to an even exponent, or an even power. See, 2 is an even number. But if we have a negative base raised to an odd power you know, or exponent, that gives you a negative value. So for example, let me just give you a little example here. Let's say we do... Um, a negative base. Let's say we do negative 2, but we do that to the power of 3. Now that's to an odd power, right? Because 3 is an odd number. So that means this here is going to be negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. In other words, negative 2 times negative 2, that's positive 4. But 4 times negative 2 is going to be negative 8. So do you notice it was negative? So a negative base to an odd power gives you a negative value. Whereas a negative base to an even power, that gives you a positive value. That's sort of a generic rule. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. There we go. So that's really nice to know. And now we have an extra little thing maybe. is What does an exponential graph actually look like? Because some people actually might want to know that. So let's say we want to graph an x and a y like this. Maybe I graph an equation like y equals 2 to the power of x, let's see. Well, that's something that goes like this. So it goes kind of like that. It's got an asymptote here. In other words, it sort of reaches infinitely close to the x-axis here. It's something that grows exponentially. So this here is an example of an exponential graph. You can have them, of course, negative, and you can have all sorts of different things. But I just want to show you at least this is what a, an exponential graph can look like.